they fled Afghanistan for fear of the Taliban, but are now compelled to rebuild their lives in a foreign land. अपना मुल्क तो बेहतर है, लेकिन आला तो जब खराब है तो क्या करूँ? Despite their fears, these Afghan refugees in India yearn to return home. But can they? जब मैं शुरू करूंगा ये औरत का पिंटिंग का कनवास का ऊपर अफगानिस्तान से बहुत ज्यादा मेरा याद से आया गलियों का शहर का लोगों का वो जो लेडीज का जो बोरका पहनता है वो हर जगह से याद आता है और मैंने दो तीन तस्वीर का एक तस्वीर बना दूंगा मैं और गलियों का दुकानों जो है शाप का वो पुराना गलियों में काबुल का लोगों का ये सब मैंने कर दिया पेंटिंग का और मैं जब मैं वो का, काम करूंगा मेरा सुकून आ गया बहुत मैं खुश हो जाएगा मैंने हो गया कि ये काम जब मैं करूंगा अफगानिस्तान से बहुत ज्यादा याद आता है फॉर फिफ्टी ईयर ओल्ड अकबा फहाद आर्ट इज अ सेफ स्पेस फॉर क्रिएटिव एक्सप्रेशन But for the Taliban, art is haram or forbidden. Akbar faced repeated threats from the Taliban, who demanded that he stop painting and close his art studio in Kabul. He had to leave the city and escape to his village when the threats became more frequent. The Taliban burned down his art studio and destroyed much of his work. पहले भी तालिबान अशरफ गनी का दौरे में तालिबान काबुल से उधर भी आना जाना था और धमकी देता है लोगों का और दो तीन बार मेरे को भी धमकी दिया उन्होंने कह रहा था कि ये हराम है मत कर लो और हमारा सबसे ज़्यादा स्टूडेंट लेडीज था उधर घर का और उन्होंने कह रहा था कि मत कर लो ये ये काम हराम है ये छोड़ दो दूसरा काम शुरू कर लो और लेकिन हमारा जो काम है पहले से क्योंकि हमारा काम थी तीस साल हो गया ये पेंटिंग और करना है मेरा इन 2018 Akbar fled to India with his wife and three children. Among a few heirlooms, he brought with him a bag containing some of his paintings that he holds dearer than his life. He left Kabul expecting to return a few years later. Today, that has become a distant dream. Assalamu alaikum. Salam alaikum. Khub hasti wa ساعت خوب است بخیر جانک جور چی حال هستی اکبر دفتری نمی آیا اکبر دفتری نمی بینی آنه اگان چکر as a refugee in india akbar spends time painting and teaching art to children 
He has no fixed income now, as he has been affected by the pandemic like everyone else. But he's happy because his children go to an Afghani school to study. Like Aqaba, many Afghan artists are on the run. The Taliban have been removing artworks and murals in an attempt to make society more Islamic. And less than three months after seizing power, they've covered most of them with white paint and replaced them with pro-Taliban messages. Images of whitewashed walls bear testimony not just to lost art, but also to lost freedom that artists once enjoyed. For those like Akbar who came to India seeking refuge, the return may be uncertain, but at least they find some comfort living here. Not only do India and Afghanistan have historic ties, the two countries hold similarities linguistically, culturally and in terms of shared traditions. The relationship between Indians and Afghans goes back centuries because we shared a common boundary. Now, what is different is that after 1947, we got a boundary. Our boundary with, came with Pakistan rather than with Afghanistan. So we did not share a common frontier as we had through centuries earlier than that. However, the relationship, the political relationship between independent India and Afghanistan also was a very close one. In 1950, it was one of the first countries with which we signed a treaty of peace and friendship. In the most recent history, and by that I mean if you look at post-1980 uh, or so and what happened in Afghanistan, there were a number of Afghans who would flee to India simply because they had business ties here. Some of them had homes over here. Um, so as violence increased in Afghanistan, you saw a lot of Afghans come to India really to sh seek shelter from the violence. Their children went to schools here and colleges here. In 1996, when the Taliban took over, we saw a much larger number of Afghans needing to come here. The speed of collapse in Kabul in August 2021 stunned the world. Desperate Afghans swarmed the tarmac at Kabul's international airport to leave the country they loved, the one that was now completely overrun by the Taliban. No one predicted the shocking speed at which the Taliban took over. No Western intelligence agency can that today can claim that this was completely expected in the way that it unfolded. That was very clear. It was clear that the American government was taken back, the British government was taken back, the Norwegians and so many others. I think the surprise came when the Biden administration took this very quick decision to leave in a very short span of time. Now, there are many theories about how this could have been done differently. Could they have stayed on? Should they have stayed on? Could a small footprint of 2,000 American soldiers stayed on for another year, so on and so forth. But I think the bottom line is it took everybody by surprise. Current situation, unfortunately, is a very tragic situation. There was a lot of faith put in the fact that perhaps this is a different Taliban. The phrase that was often used by the Western writers was Taliban 2.0, that it was very different from the Taliban of the 1990s. Well, so far, 
we see very little evidence of that. The tragedy is that while we still don't know if the Taliban have changed or not, we do know that in the last 20 years, Afghanistan has changed a lot. When the last US military flight left Kabul on August 31st, marking the end of a 20-year presence in Afghanistan, it also marked the end of a massive evacuation effort by the US and its allies. India, for its part, evacuated over 600 people, including 112 Afghan nationals, according to government sources. Despite the historic ties between the two countries, India's stance towards the refugee situation has evolved over the years. Remember, India had uh, throughout backed members of the resistance, uh, especially what was called the Northern Alliance. And therefore, when the Taliban actually came to power, Northern Alliance leaders, many of their commanders actually, uh, somebody like Abdullah, Abdullah, for example, set up home in India because they felt comfortable over here. That's in stark contrast to what we have seen since August 15th, uh, 2021, uh, when the Indian government really made it clear that they did not want Afghan refugees uh, to come into India in any number. So not only did the Indian government stop or close its borders really for any Afghans coming, they stopped flights. Uh, they also actually canceled all the previous visas given to Afghans. Following the Taliban takeover, India announced that it would provide emergency e-visas to Afghan nationals and around 60,000 applications were received. The Home Ministry reported that while the visas for over 4,500 Afghan nationals were extended, only around 200 emergency e-visas were issued. The number of applications for e-visas is very high. But the number of applications that are successful, which I'm afraid are very low. Now, there are a variety of reasons as to why they're very low. One is, of course, security concerns. Um, the fact is you don't have a system within Kabul today to verify visa applications. So who's coming in, who's not coming in. And those, you know, by all measure, it's understandable that the government and the country as a whole has a particular view on this. Having said that, given the emergency, perhaps there were ways in which we could pivot to making more visas successful. Akbar can count himself lucky for managing to leave Afghanistan three years before the fall of Kabul. He has a refugee card and is waiting to get his visa that will allow him to get more work in India. He doesn't foresee going back to Afghanistan, even though every piece of art he creates reflects the life he left behind. <laughs> Afghanistan to Refugees are among the world's most vulnerable people. Several international agreements were drawn up in the aftermath of the First and Second World Wars to protect people who fled their homelands. In July 1951, a diplomatic conference in Geneva adopted the convention relating to the status of refugees, which was later amended by the 1967 Protocol. These documents define who a refugee is and what kind of legal protection a refugee is entitled to receive in host countries. India, however, is not party to the convention. The politics behind why we did not sign the 1951 convention is a different set of politics. But 
We have had refugees coming in from Tibet, the most famous being the Dalai Lama, of course. We have had refugees coming in from Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, from East Pakistan, which is today Bangladesh, from Sri Lanka, and also from Afghanistan. So we have actually had a large section of people coming in. We have had the office of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, a very active office since 1981. So it is not that we have had difficult relations with refugees, but we don't accept the international obligations of the UN Convention. India has very complex relationship with refugees. To begin with, you had the partition. Uh, were those who came over from what became Pakistan at that time, were they considered refugees? No, they were considered Indians uh, and they stayed on. After that, we have seen waves of uh, refugees from various places, uh, but the largest number that India has, uh, the government has shown its concern about, have been illegal immigration from Bangladesh. And there is a desire not to allow those two to get mixed. You know, there are two concepts in the UN Convention. One is the concept of political asylum. And the second is the concept of non-refulmo. Non-refulmo is that you don't send the refugee back to the country where he or she feels that they are going to be persecuted. As far as non-refulmo is concerned, we fulfill that completely. So we fulfill the obligations without necessarily uh, being a party to the convention. It is this policy that has enabled many Afghan refugees who came to India prior to the fall of Kabul to continue living here. We're sitting in Delhi right now, 15 minutes from here, if you go across to Bhogal, for instance, I mean, that is like mini Afghanistan. It's like a small carve out of Kabul that lives in that part. And those networks are informal. They're not necessarily legal. They're widespread, right? So I think that network itself to, was able to absorb a lot of people coming out of Afghanistan, but it was tough. Little Kabul in Southeast Delhi is a tiny neighborhood filled with shops, restaurants and supermarkets, most of them owned and run by Afghan refugees. In these lanes, those that fled persecution find peace and things that they yearn for. Be it dry fruits or spices or naan e afghani, considered the national bread of Afghanistan. यहां से पहले मजार शरीफ में रहते थे और वहां पे लाइफ सेटलमेंट था वहां पे ही काम कर रहे थे तो फिर वहां से सीधा यहां पे आ गए हम लोग रिफ्यूजी साकी दुला हैज बीन इन इंडिया सिंस 2017 एंड रन्स अ टाइनी अफगान ब्रेड स्टोर इन लिटिल काबुल while the business was good for the first three years, it has been hit hard since the pandemic struck. I mean, especially for those who didn't have work available at that time, it was very difficult for them. Now it's very difficult for them, for us, for us, for us. I mean, now we are in this situation that we don't know where we are going. It's because of the corona, then the system changed because of the system change of the government of Afghanistan. तो उसके बाद बिल्कुल अभी सब सब ना नाउमीद जैसे हैं मतलब उम्मीद कई काम करने के लिए देख रहे हैं हमें कई काम मिल जाए मतलब अपना गुजारा हो जाए उधर फैमिली लोगों का खर्चा यहाँ पे अपना खर्चा रूम की बारा फिर रिफ्यूजी साइड से हमें इतना सपोर्ट नहीं मिलता थोड़ा थोड़ा राशन सपोर्ट मिलता है वो भी कुछ दिने के लिए थोड़ा वगैरह मिल जाता है वो भी तीन महीने चार महीने के बाद एक सपोर्ट आ जाता है इसी वजह से थोड़ा दिक्कत होता है हमें रिफ्यूजी वाले की यही हालत है Sakidula holds what is called a blue paper that allows him to stay in India. 
His status as a refugee is under consideration by the UNHCR. A refugee card is only given to those who are unable to return to their own country, owing to a well-founded fear of persecution. It does not apply to those who moved purely for economic reasons. ये कंडीशन हम बता देते हैं उनको ये पूछते हैं तो हम इसी वजह से आया है यहां पे वो लोग कहते हैं कि आप काबुल में भी रह सकते नहीं हम हम कहते हैं काबुल में भी नहीं रह सकते वहां पे भी उनके सिस्टम आ, उनके हाथ चलते रहते हैं हम वहां जब तक हम इंडिया ना आए तब तक सेव अपने आप को महसूस नहीं करते तो फिर हम अपने आप यहां पे इसलिए पहुंचा है कि हम अपने आप को फुल मतलब सेव इस महसूस कर सके तो फिर इसलिए हम लोग यहां पे आए हैं कि यूनिसियार में हम लोगों ने अपना अपील किया कि केस outside jaane ke liye europe mein jo sabhi desh ho many afghan refugees like saki wait to be moved to a third country that offers assistance and benefits for resettlement there are currently around 17000 afghan refugees registered with the unhcr in india from my perspective what India perhaps could do and should do is have a pool of funds like many other countries have set up. France has a resettlement plan, for instance, for Afghan refugees. So that's your residential papers, that's schooling for your children, that's some temporary housing that the state allows, that's a certain amount of stipend. It's a very respectable way in which you're taking in refugees from Afghanistan, right? And they're not doing it because they've signed up to UN protocols on this. There have been demands made in India that the time has come where even if we don't accede to the international convention, we should have our own law. You know, we can have a refugee act which would set out the terms and conditions of who is a refugee, what would be their status, what would be their rights and obligations, if they wanted to settle here, how would they be settled, and so on. However, that has not yet happened, but I do think that yes, we should have our own laws in this regard. Taliban and Daesh, many people are working there, who work there, who work there, who work there. So, many people are working there. मुझे पता है अगर मैं जाऊं वहां पे प्रॉब्लम्स हो सकते हैं मेरे लिए वो लोग मुझे मार भी सकती है Twenty-three-year-old Farishta is a popular Afghan TV presenter and producer of social media content. लाजपत नगर में सब बहुत सारे क्वालिटी है कि अफगानी लोगों को मिलते हैं बहुत सारी चीजें तो मुझे भी लाजपत बहुत ज्यादा पसंद है कभी ना कभी आती हूँ यहाँ के जो फेमस अफगानी खाना है मिलती यहाँ पे मैं वो खाने के लिए यहाँ आती हूँ ऑब्वियसली जो she has a steady fan base her TikTok account is among the top five in Afghanistan while she has over sixty thousand followers on Instagram but her success came at a price. जैसे मैं ऑफिस जाती हूँ गाड़ी से मुझे मेरे गाड़ी रुका दिया उन लोगों ने तपड़ मारा है कि अगर अगले बार हमने तुम्हें टीवी पे देख दिया ये एक बार तो ये तपड़ था अगले बार तुम जिंदा नहीं बचोगे। When she repeatedly received threats from the Taliban, she quit appearing on TV shows. A year ago, she sought asylum in India and moved with her parents four sisters and a brother. The sole breadwinner of her family, she was only around 16 or 17 when her father fell ill and the burden of looking after her family fell on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. 
वहाँ पे जब मैं काम करती थी एक ही तो मेरे करियर की बात थी दूसरी फैमिली की बात थी कि फैमिली में कोई और कमाने वाला नहीं था सिर्फ मैं थी और आ, मैं उस टाइम जो कमाती थी बहुत अच्छा खासा कमाती थी वहाँ मेरी लाइफ बहुत अच्छी थी जैसे कोई प्रॉब्लम भी नहीं था जो मनी प्रॉब्लम नहीं था कुछ भी नहीं था मेरे सिस्टर बहुत अच्छे अच्छे स्कूल्स में पढ़ते थे मेरे छोटे छोटे सिस्टर जो है मेरे फैमिली में ऐसा कोई मनी इशू नहीं था वहाँ पर यही जो मैं टीवी में काम करती थी यही से अच्छा खासा पैसे भी आते थे That changed when she came to India on a short-term visa, hoping to return. With the Taliban's return to power, she may never be able to go back without risking her life. She holds a blue paper and is waiting to receive her refugee card. अच्छा खासा लाइफ मेरा चल रहा था वहाँ पर मैंने सब कुछ अपने छोड़ दिया है मैं क्यों यहाँ पर आई हूँ वहाँ लड़कियों के लिए काम करना बहुत रिस्की होता है तो मैं एक धमकीों से नहीं डरती थी बट आखिरी में मैंने देख लिया एक साल पहले बहुत ज़्यादा हुआ था She continues to post videos on social media to widen her fan base and occasionally gets some modeling assignments. But much of what she can do in India is restricted by her status as an asylum seeker. It is no deal that many like her go through. To kabhi kabhi aise sochti hu ki Afghanistan wapas jao. Wahi par kaam karo. Wahi agar yahan to hum aise bina future rehte hain roz marte hain. Waise aise marne se to acha hai ki wahi par Afghanistan pe ek baar mar jaye insaan. Wahi acha hoga. The threat of violence has long been a harsh reality for many Afghan women. Today, the Taliban are stripping away so many of Afghan women's hard-won freedoms. India has attracted a sizable number of Afghan women to take refuge here. They live mainly in Delhi and bordering areas. But finding a steady, well-paid job is hard for most of them. तालिबान तंग करते रहते थे जेंट्स को ठीक से काम करे तो उसको तंग करते थे उठाते थे इसलिए वहाँ से परेशान होकर निकल गए यहाँ फरोजा बिलोंग्स द हजारा कम्युनिटी that has a long history of persecution as one of the largest ethnic groups in Afghanistan the hazaras have endured various forms of oppression from pashtun rulers and governments including slavery systematic expulsion from ancestral homes and lands and massacres the hazaras are one of the most persecuted people in the world tang karte the isi tarah bachcho ko kidnap karte the kabhi jeans ko तंग करते थे मतलब काम करने नहीं देते थे स्कूल में पढ़ने नहीं देते तंग करते थे हमारे जेंट्स को बोलते थे अगर तुम लोग जॉब करोगे गवर्नमेंट में तो हम उठा लेंगे आपके आपको काम करने नहीं देंगे मजबूर हो गए सब हमारे घर सब कुछ हमारा छोड़ दिया is that she has a job as Silaiwali an organization founded to help Afghan refugees Here these women create handmade dolls from cotton scrap thus upcycling waste fabric Silaiwali works in association with the UNHCR to market and sell products through their online platform Made 51 We started Silaiwali in end of 2018 with the two mottos we had which was you know ecology and uh, solidarity 
Our motto line is stitch against waste and a stitch for freedom. Most of them have really difficult or sad story and they were scared of, uh, for their family or for their kids. We have opened some bank accounts for them, which is a very difficult, which is almost impossible in India. When you are a refugee, it's not possible to have a bank account. So it's very difficult to get employed without a bank account or without an Aadhaar card, which is like very uh, India specific. But we have managed to open some bank accounts. This one is too big compared to the other. For Iris and Bijwadeep, it made sense from a design perspective to make dolls, given most of the waste fabric they were sourcing from garment manufacturers was in the form of smaller cuttings or scraps. But the important thing is, the initiative gives stable employment to around 70 women or more. I have to show you. I don't think there are too many people who really actually believe that one day they will go back. One second is that, you know, as far as the women are concerned, because, you know, I mostly uh, sort of interact with the ladies who are here. India also gives a lot of freedom to women. India is a far more liberal country and all the ladies who are here they, they really value that liberty in the way sort of they can move around, the, the clothes they wear, and you know, all those things which are prohibited by extreme regime, uh, which is actually very anti-woman. So when they come to a country like India, uh, that is a big, that's a big reason uh, for them to be here and to feel comfortable here. Indian to sabhi achha hai. Koi ame nahi bolta ki ab Afghani hu yaha pe nahi rehna hi nahi. Aisa koi pareshan nahi karta. Am India se khush hai. India ke logon se bhi khush hai. Ame bhot pyar se rakhte hai. Par ame problem apne aap se hai kyunki hamare paas job nahi hai. Jain stick se kam nahi kar sakte hai. Yaha pe salary hota hai dus hazar. अब लॉकडाउन में 8000 हो गया है तो उससे क्या घर चलेगा जो इंसान महीने को 80000 खाने वाला होगा तो वो 10000 से चल पाएगा For these women not having to live under Taliban rule is a blessing but living away from one's own country isn't सोच रहे कि कनाडा का वही बस उसी के इंतजार में ही है कि वहाँ का कुछ हो जाएगा तो हम वहाँ जाके सेटिंग हो जाएंगे पर वहाँ का भी कुछ पता नहीं है अभी बस क्या बताऊँ सर आपको हम आधा रास्ते में खड़े हैं ना उधर जा सकते हैं ना इधर जा सकते हैं ऐसा बस कनाडा के राधे करें अगर उधर से कुछ हो जाएगा तो हम वहाँ चले जाएंगे अगर नहीं होगा तो फिर इंडिया में कुछ करेंगे अपना कार्ड वार्ड देखेंगे हमारा बनेगा कुछ तो अपना काम करेंगे नहीं तो ऐसे ही रहेंगे क्या करें? They are all here on a temporary basis. When they go to a country like Australia, Canada, and these developed countries, they have a much better social security system. Once you immigrate, you become a part and a beneficiary of that social security system. That, of course, is a big plus because your your insurance and your health and your education. Those things are taken care of by the state, which, you know, in India, they are out of it. Whatever, you know, social security we have in India, the refugees who are here, they are out of that system because they do not have the relevant documents to benefit from the system in India. Not everybody who applies gets accepted in a third country. It is usually a long wait for many of them. But despite the threats they face in Afghanistan, there is one thing that never changes. The yearning to go back home. लेकिन पता नहीं 
तालिबान अट गया अगर कोई और आया सब सही हो गया तो चले जाएंगे हमारा वातन है हमारा घर है जा सकते हैं पर इस हालात में तो कोई नहीं जा पाएगा हालत ख़राब है वहाँ पे बहुत यही बोल रहे थे उम्मीद अब जाने का उम्मीद ही ख़त्म हो गए कैसे जाएंगे पहले तो तालिबान नहीं था हम सोच लेते थे कि कुछ साल के लिए हम बाहर जाएंगे हो सकता है वहाँ सही हो जाएगा वापस जाएंगे तो कुछ भी नहीं हुआ उससे बदतर हो गया और यहाँ भी हम लोग परेशान हैं हमें सिटीज़न नहीं मिल रहा घर नहीं मिल रहा कुछ भी नहीं मिल रहा अपना प्राइवेट सन अमरीका इजाजत हाँ वाला जो पास वर्यम तो उसे लो थे सू तालिबान सा गोली कश की नहीं ऐन तक साढ़े मर इतना रहा कि एक गोली अगर ऐन ना ऐन लगती दस बारह नफर साढ़े शहीद होंगे क्यों गोली चल जाए डर 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 उ दाशे का पारे होंगे ना और सारे तो साढ़े बड़ी सख्ती गुजरी अस आए बहुत सख्ती से आए हाँ Fifty-year-old Ahmadjit Singh managed to get out of Afghanistan in December last year, after the fall of Kabul. He ran a grocery store in Jalalabad. His friend Jazbir and his family members were also on the same flight out of Kabul. Baj baj ke nikle, bandukon ke samne, goliyon ke samne. Hamen to pata bhi nahi tha ki kya hoga airport ke samne. Jab gaye to pata chal gaya. ऊपर दीवारों से छोटे छोटे बच्चों को उठा रहे थे हमें तो रस्सा भी नहीं मिल रहा था वो गुजार सकते हैं छोटा बच्चा नहीं गुजार सकते सामने छोटे बच्चे मतलब उसने जाने हम कि जी कुछ खाने सुखी रोटी तो सीधे नहीं कि तुझे मतलब बच्चे के आदमी एक इंसान के पोखो जाए ना वो सुखी रोटी मजा कर दिए पानी के साथ It was an arduous journey that took them first to Tajikistan and then to Delhi India evacuated hundreds of Afghans and stranded Indians via six flights. India was that safe harbor, continues to be that safe harbor for Afghans. But look, it's not easy. I mean, um, when you're somebody who's essentially on the run, who's trying to find your permanent home, you've left your kind of homes in Kabul or Herat or Mazar. Or so on and so forth. You somehow manage to get into a taxi, get to a border with Central Asia, with either Uzbekistan or Tajikistan. Found it hard, got a ticket, made your way to Delhi. You know, got through the immigration process, and then you got to think about the next step. You know, you're with three kids, with four kids. It's a trial. It's a challenge. For these families, fear was a constant companion. The Sikh community has been the target of many attacks in Kabul. In March 2020, ISIS suicide bombers attacked a gurudwara in Kabul with nearly 200 worshippers inside the building. 25 Sikhs were killed and many wounded after a long siege. हमारे अपने घर के आठ बंदे थे जब गुरुद्वारे में घुस के मारेंगे तो फिर क्या करोगे बार तो मारना मारना है गुरुद्वारे में घुस के मारेंगे तो फिर उधर रहने का क्या मतलब है तो गुरुद्वारे में मार सकते हैं तो घर में भी आके मार के जाएंगे ऐसी बात कर रहे शागर ना कह रहे रोज मारे दिन दे पच्ची भी मरने होने भी पच्ची मरने रोज मरा होने की मरना कहीं जो है 
ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਬਗਾਨ ਹੈ ਗੱਡੀ ਪਾਣ ਹੈ ਘੰਟੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਖਾਲਤੇ ਲੁਕਸ ਖਾਲਤੇ ਪਰ ਸਰ ਜਰਾ ਰੱਖ ਕੇ ਸਰ ਸੜ ਕੇ ਚਲੇ ਜਾਣੇ ਤੱਕ ਖੋਲ ਆਂਖ ਕੈਸੇ ਹੋ ਠੀਕ ਹੋ ਅੱਛਾ ਟਾਸ ਮਾਰ ਕੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਮਾਰਿਆ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੋਣ ਪੁੱਛਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੁੱਛਦੇ ਕਿਉਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਨਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੜੀ ਜਵੇ ਕੀ ਜੁਕਣੇ ਤੇ ਗੁੰਡੇ ਕੀ ਆਨੇ ਬਾਤ ਕਰਨ ਡਸ ਮਾਰ ਕੇ ਚਲੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਸਾਡੇ ਇੱਕ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਦੀ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਈ ਮਿਸਾਲੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਕੂਲ ਬੱਚੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਿਆ ਸਕਨੇ ਹਮ ਅਗਰ ਬੱਚੇ ਸਕੂਲ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਿਆਈ ਮੇਰਾ ਤਿਆਰੀ ਪਾਈ ਸਕੂਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਕਤਬ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਕਤਬ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਈ ਕਦੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਬਾੜੋ ਕਦੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰੋ ਕਦੀ ਉਹ ਕਰੋ ਉਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਖਾਤਮ ਬੱਚੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਦੇ ਕੇ ਕਿ ਨਹੀਂ ਨੋਵੇ ਕਿ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਤਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਸ਼ਰੀਬ ਕਾਨ ਤਿਨ these families along with several others are rehabilitated by Sopti Foundation run by New York based philanthropist Mandeep Singh the foundation provides them accommodation in Delhi and medical and monthly expenses for one year until they find employment are kuch aise do kilo kapde de aaya do jod kapde de te sare hi do kan ਸਾਰ ਕੁਝ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਹਲਾ ਸੀ ਆਪੀ ਲੈਤਾ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਹ ਹੋਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ ਹੋਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ ਹੋਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨਵੇਂ ਨਵੇਂ ਤਾਂ ਬੂਟਾ ਤੱਕ ਜੁੱਤੇ ਤੱਕ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਇਨਸਾਨੋ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਵੀ ਨਾ ਸਾਰੇ ਇਤਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਕਿ ਦੋ ਜੋੜੇ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੋਕਲ ਕਿ ਆਏ ਸਾਰ ਕਾਰ ਪਾਰੀਆ ਦੁਕਾਨਾਂ ਪਾਰੀਆ ਰਹਿ ਗਈਆਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲ ਬਹੁਤ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਆਇਆ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲ ਆਈ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਕਰਦਾ ਆਰਾਮ ਸੇ ਸੀ ਬੈਠ ਐਸੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਾਰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਇਆ ਦੁੱਧ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਚ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਤੇ ਬੋਤਲ ਵੀ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਮਕਸਦ ਆਪਣਾ ਜਾਨ ਕੱਢੀ ਇਹ ਦਗਾ ਫਲੈਟ ਦੇ ਵਿਚਕਾਰ ਆਇਆ ਐਂ ਜੁੱਤੇ ਤਲੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਇਆ ਬਹੁਤ ਬੁਰੀ ਹਾਲਤ ਆਈ ਦਗਾ ਪਰਮਾਤਮਾ ਨੇ ਵੇਖਿਆ ਤੇ ਤੋ ਸਾਲੇ ਵੇਖਿਆ ਪਤਾ ਉਸੀ ਤੋ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਮਜਬੂਰੀ ਹਾਲਤ ਨਾਲ ਸਭ ਲੋਕ ਆਏ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਨਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਏ like amajit and jasbir afghan hindus ram and his family were also among those who were airlifted from kabul in december last year jab hum wahan se nikal rahe the hame is cheez ka bhi dukh tha ki hum apna apni matti apna watan apna mulk chhod rahe hain lekin kya karte वहां की सिचुएशन ही कुछ हमारे लिए ऐसी खराब हो गई थी तो हम मजबूरी से वो मुल्क छोड़ के हम लोग यहां पे आए हैं जी राम हैज बीन ग्रांटेड अ 6 मंथ वीसा बट होप्स दैट ही एंड हिज फैमिली आर कंसीडर्ड फॉर सिटीजनशिप व्हिच विल एंश्योर स्टेडी एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड बेटर फ्यूचर्स फॉर हिज चिल्ड्रन हम अफगानी हम आधार कार्ड नहीं बना सकते तो हमारी ये ये प्रॉब्लम है यहां पे जब तक हमें नागरिकता ना दी जाए आधार कार्ड हमारा ना बन जाए तो हम अपने बच्चों को भी स्कूल में एडमिशन नहीं दिला सकते जी तो नहीं आ रही विदाउट अ क्लियर पाथ टू सिटीजनशिप दीस अफगान्स एंड इंडिया वुड वांट टू अप्लाई टू अ थर्ड कंट्री फॉर रेफ्यूज इंडिया इज हैप्पी टू प्ले होस्ट It now supports nearly 200,000 refugees from various countries. But is wary of offering them citizenship which can put a strain on infrastructure and resources or upset the demographic balance. Let's face it, economic opportunities in West Europe or the United States or Canada are much greater than in India. India is after all a developing country. So uh for them this is more of a transit stop you know other popular transit stops that the afghans have found have been some of the central asian countries or even turkey or dubai in some cases these afghan refugees are now going into economies that are suffering including in india 
uh, where jobs are already down, where the economy is already very badly hit, um, where people are not as willing to uh, give work and uh, shelter and, and uh, uh, you know, allow others, outsiders who don't have papers to join uh, the society. So you're dealing with an added level of tragedy, really, that Afghan uh, refugees here face. It's not as if they came from poverty or they came from poorer backgrounds. They have seen a much better life in Afghanistan over the last 20 years. And all of a sudden, they've lost everything and they don't seem to find a, a welcome anywhere. It is a challenge that Amarjit, Jaspia and Ram face, just as all other Afghan refugees in India. They may be among the fortunate few who escaped danger and left Afghanistan, but their hope for the future leaves them craving for more. ہماری <laughs> Other refugees, like Akbar, are slowly rebuilding their lives, free from fear, seeking comfort of the familiar, and living around little Kabul, a home away from home. Feeling to acha hai ki uke udhar alat kharaab hai aur idhar sahi hai, better hai. Mera bacho jo hai, bahut khush hai idhar. क्योंकि अमन है सुकून है और ये कार का कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है हमारा और रंग रन भी वो जब काम मिलेगा तो सब प्रॉब्लम खत्म हो जाएगा और मेरा वाइफ बहुत खुश है इधर बच्चों भी स्कूल जाएगा ट्यूशन आना जाना है ऑनलाइन और ऑफलाइन दोनों का तो इधर बेहतर है अफगानिस्तान से